Hello everybody and welcome to Out of the Short Box. Uh, I'm Josiah McComas and today we're doing a special on the rack uh, broadcast. Y'all know that every now and then I like to do these on uh, the rack shows where I talk about current comics that are coming out. Uh, usually I like to do new titles. Uh, sometimes I'll talk about new events uh, and everything uh, like that, but uh, I, sp- I really like new titles or, or, or new launches uh, of existing characters and to go over some of the stuff. And I like to focus on, on stuff that doesn't get a lot of the press um, uh, like some of the others. Uh, some of the major superheroes, you know, always get the the big marketing press and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, every now and then I like to talk about the uh uh, these independent comics and some of these other titles that we go through, and I'm really excited uh, to talk about this one today. I had it on my pull list uh, uh, when I first saw the first preview on it. I had it immediately added to my pull list. Uh, got it yesterday uh, when the comics came in, and and I'm so excited about it. It's by Valiant Comics. Uh, you all have heard me talk about Valiant before. Uh, we did a biography on Exo Man of War. Um, uh, Valiant is uh, a great publication, uh, great printed uh, books. Love how they print uh, with their paper, the coloring that's on there. Um, the colors just pop on the pages, and, and their covers are some of the best covers uh, that you can get. Uh, but they have a new one that just came out uh, yesterday called The Forgotten Queen. Uh, and I was really excited about this because, uh, for many reasons, um, just with the preview that I heard about it. and then, But one of the main uh, reasons why I was excited was because uh, the writer they had for for it. Uh, Teeny Howard. Uh, if you uh, have been a fan of the independent comic book world, that name is is, is uh, uh, not new to you. Uh, Teeny's done an amazing uh, bit of work over the past few years. Uh, she uh, uh, wrote Magdalena uh, for a long time. That's uh, basically how she cut her teeth in, in, into the comic book world uh, with us. She did Hack and Slash or Hack Slash Hack uh, yeah, Hack Slash I could say hack slash slash, <laughs> but hack slash, uh, she uh, did the Assassinistas, um, and she actually wrote uh, uh, Captain America Annual Number 1 back in 2018 uh, for the main line. Uh, she did uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers uh, Pink, and she also did uh, Rick and Morty. Uh, so I know a lot of people uh, know her from the Rick and Morty uh, run, but I was really excited because uh, Teeny's uh, very talented in how she writes her comic book scripts, and uh, this, uh, this one did not let me down at all and i'll talk about that a little bit more the art's done by emma carpina uh a little bit familiar seeing seeing his work uh from time to time uh but uh, i i really need to see more of it because uh, i know the artwork in this book was just awesome i could see that uh, a lot of time was put into it a lot of detail um i love it like i said the, the images just pop uh, and, and the storyline just catches you. So with no further ado, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the comic. I don't want to spoil the comic book for you because my main mission with this podcast is to get you interested in the comic book, to get you interested in it so you go out there and you get it. And you can get it three ninety nine. Go out to your comic book store. Get that. And I'm a big proponent of getting the physical book, but if you don't have time to stop at your local cop, uh, lo- local comic shop, uh, you can get it on Comixology. Um, but you know uh, that's done by with Amazon. Uh, you can get it for there at the three ninety nine, and you can read it digitally. Have it have it to own on a digital format. But again, uh, just make a quick stop at your local comic book shop. Uh, you know, here up in uh, Northern Kentucky in Florence, we have Comics to Game. Stop by and, and just uh, you know let my contest. No, and, and you can tell them the title. You don't even, uh, you know, you may look at the wall and say, "Man, that's overwhelming." So many different comics and everything from there. They have them organized, but if you don't even have time to do that, all you have to do is simply go up to one of them by, at the desk or one of the guys on the floor and say, "Or hey, if I'm there, you could say, hey, Josiah, can you show me that Forgotten Queen that you were talking about?'" And I'll go get that. I'll grab the book for you. Uh, so, but definitely get this book. This is an excellent book, um, especially if, if if you haven't read a lot of comics. This is just a great overall book to read, um, and I'm excited for, for the next titles. So, the way the comic book starts off is it's in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and we see this expedition team. Uh, they're doing an archaeological uh, type dive, and they're looking for these artifacts. Uh, we learn some of the ba- main characters up front. 
uh, start listening to a girl named Paige, and there's another gentleman named Eric, and they're on this dive, and they're constantly talking to their uh, to their ship, uh, the Lonengren, and and they're talking back and forth to them, uh, telling them. But you see, uh, again, and this is the beauty of, of Teeny's uh, writing and, and the beauty of the script, and also, and it's a good cooperation, it's a good partnership. I like this team. I like this team of this this author, and I like the team of this. Uh, this artist because uh, they work together. Uh, the script works together. and It is so well done. Uh, but you, something's going wrong. Uh, you, you hear this panic. Uh, you, you can actually... And see, that's what it, that makes good writing is that when you read the words, you can hear it. Uh, but you can hear this, this panic in the people's voices that something's going wrong. Something's not right. Uh, something's fishy down there. And then you hear the ship talking back to them. Hey, what's wrong? We need to get you guys out of there. Something's going wrong. Everything else. And then... You see this splash, uh, the last two panels. Uh, you see this uh, the panic in Eric's eyes. Uh, and then all of a sudden you see this hand reach out and cover him. And then you see, all what you see is these wim- uh, the, this woman's, uh, she has a, a lash of hair uh, going in between her eyes. And you just see these, uh, these uh, beautiful, uh, almost golden type eyes, uh, these copper uh to almost gold, uh, shimmering eyes, just staring menacingly uh, at this gentleman. Uh, so you don't know what happened. And then all of a sudden it takes you back in time. You get a sudden shift all the way to 1200 AD in the middle of the Gobi Desert uh, with Genghis Khan. And he's sleeping in his tent and he's got his harem around him. He's surrounded uh, by women that are sleeping and, and he's he's in an upright position. And all of a sudden you, he gets interrupted. And uh, his men saying, uh, you know, we've got the witch. We finally have the witch. Uh, and he goes out there and he's like, you know, well, bring me to her. I want to see this woman and, and everything. Because uh, apparently uh, there was this rumors of this witch who was turning uh, Genghis Khan's men against him and everything like that. And Genghis Khan sees her and he considers her nothing but just a, a lowly woman and sends her on her way. He says, you know, she'll die in the desert without any wa- water. Send her away. Uh, and then before she leaves, she it looks like she's about to snap the neck of this uh of this guy but uh what ends up happening is um she takes his hel- uh his helmet off of him and she just walks off into the desert uh and then we, of course we go back in uh, in time uh back forward in time i guess i should say we go forward in time back to uh the research vessel uh that we're on and uh we meet uh the uh uh, who I think is going to be one of the, the main characters in the storyline. Uh, we meet this uh, archaeologist, and who's, uh, we find out this is the person who's funding uh, the ship named uh, Sarnai Oinishmeg. And I'm sorry, Teeny, if you're listening to this, I'm sorry if I butchered the name of your character there. Uh, Sarnai Oinishmeg. Um, uh, she she's uh, funding the ship. You find out that she's the main one, and you you kind of figure out there's something else here besides just looking for some rare artifacts. That there's uh, some mission. Uh, the other uh, biologists are concerned because of Eric. What happened to Eric? And they're wanting to find him. Um, they're concerned about what happened to him. Um, and then uh, uh, Sarnai says uh, mentions to uh, the group that she's just going to go ahead and. Um, look for uh, the artifacts herself since everyone's so scared and she dies off. So you kind of, you get that sense. Again, you get that build-up, that natural build-up that there's something mysterious going on here. There's something uh, not quite ordinary uh, that's going on here and that's what I love. It just builds that suspense, uh, keeps you on the edge of the sheet. I know the saying is on the edge of the seat, uh, but, uh, you know, with comic books, you're on the edge of the sheet of that paper there, uh, ready to turn and, and see where the story takes you. Well, it ends up taking us back in time again to 1200 A.D. with Genghis Khan. Same scene. You know, he's hanging out there at his tents with his harem, and all of a sudden we see uh, who they call the witch, uh, this beautiful woman who they call the witch. Uh, and That helmet she took, it's filled with water. Uh, she took a helmet uh, off that guy before she left, and she comes back with, with water, and she says, she walked all so many miles with uh, all this water, and she's saying, I bet your men haven't seen this much water in ages. Uh, and Genghis Khan just looks at her straight in the eyes, and he's like, who are you? So we see this mystery and, and who this woman is, and, and then it takes us even further back in time to kind of explain who this woman is. Uh, and it says that the, the, the witch uh, began telling uh 
Genghis Khan her story and saying that she was around uh, before before even language was was a thing before language was even accepted and uh, that they gave her a name they would call her Tabutu uh, and uh, and then it talks about the meaning of that name it means swarm of flies uh, that wherever she was around there would be a swarm of flies and then the second was arousal and bloodlust and then uh, the third was war and uh, so uh, you find out that wherever this woman goes, tragedy happens. Uh, death and death follows this woman uh, wherever she goes. And uh, like I said, it's a beautifully drawn woman, especially on the page that I just talked about. Uh, definitely look at that that page. Um, it, it's an it's an excellent uh, uh, page uh, on there. I believe it's uh, yeah, it's page number ten. Uh, if you pick up the comic book, go to page 10. Uh, the last two panels is beautiful. and it, 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 uh, The artist, uh, this Emma Carr, did a wonderful job. And, and I want to give props to that, uh, to, to him, to the colorists, uh, to Valiant as well. Uh, there was a, an episode, Stan Lee used to have a show that came on um, in the uh, early 90s. Uh, it, it was on VHS tapes, and I used to get them when I was a young boy. So I'm dating myself, I'm aging myself here. Uh, but I used to get those uh, uh, VHS tapes. You know, I was 10, 11, 12 during this time. Um, but uh, he would uh, launch these VHS tapes, and uh, he would have uh, the comics great on his show. He he would have the some of the uh, comic creators like uh, like Bob Kane and and, and different uh, different uh, authors and artists on his show, and he would interview them and talk about them. And he would always have this thing where he would take them back to the drawing board, and he would have them do the, some of their artwork. Uh, well, one of the shows he had John Romita Jr. and John Romita Sr. Uh, 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 John, yeah, John Romita Jr. and John Romita Sr. on the show, and he had John Romita Sr. sit down, who who Stan had worked for for years, and uh, he asked John to uh, to sketch a uh, a woman to draw a woman, and then Stan talked about why he asked for a woman, and John uh, Romita Sr. commented on that as well, and the fact that to accurately uh, draw a woman uh, to, 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 to correctly portray uh, certain attributes of a woman to get her personality cro- across was a great talent by an artist. And you could always tell the greats by how they do this. Uh, this ammo car, Pina, got it down, period. Uh, because it, 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 looking at it from an artist's point of view, uh, the eyes, you, you get this, this, this feeling of uh, pure grit, uh, this pure, um, almost evil, uh, I'd say more conniving, but this, this, uh, you get that bloodlust in, in, in the eyes of this person, you get the strength of this woman, um, you don't, you, you get the femininity of this woman just by, uh, the curvature that he, that he gave to the woman, uh, uh the beauty in the lines, the flowing lines and everything from there, but you can also see, uh, the musculature of this woman, you can see that this woman is someone not to be messed with, and, um, uh, highly, 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 uh, enjoy, uh, the artwork in this. And then, of course, Valiant always does a great job on, on their colors. So whoever they had doing the coloring, bravo, bravo, uh, good stuff all the way through. But you see that this woman has been around almost since the very beginning. Uh, she, there's a scene where it looks like she's with uh, Cain uh, and Abel at the murder of Abel by Cain. Uh, and again, death seems to follow uh, this woman as we go. So you keep having these instances of going back and forth in time, and you find out that this woman now goes by the name Vexana. Uh, so uh, she go, she goes by the name Vexana, and she's she's uh, uh, with Genghis Khan, uh, with his men, and these curses happen. Uh, you go back to the ship, um, and you start. Uh, uh, I, like I said, I don't want to spoil the comic because I want you to get the comic. Uh, but you see the 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 the, the patron. Uh, Serene, uh, she's diving, uh, she goes down there, and she finally says she found what she was looking for. And uh, it shows you what she was looking for, uh, but I'm not going to ruin that for you, because I want you to pick up this comic, The Forgotten Queen. Valiant, excellent job. Love it. Um, I'm going to keep it on my pull list. Uh, it's going to be done. So, folks, I highly recommend getting The Forgotten Queen 
you will not regret it. Uh, it'll be a great buy for you. Great comic book. Uh, can't wait to, to see more. Uh, Teeny Howard, you have accomplished uh, one goal uh, that I think every comic book writer uh, should accomplish is by the end of this comic book, you've got me wanting more. So I can't wait uh, to hear more of your story, to follow this along. Uh, great character in Vaxana. I can already see that. That's going to be uh, wonderful. Um, just to go in through here, uh, you really don't have, and it's a unique setup, uh, you know, because you don't have a, a direct antagonist or uh, protagonist or antagonist setup. You're speculative right now. You're wondering what in the world is truly going on here. Um, you know, you have this woman where death is all around her, but is she going to be the protagonist or the antagonist? You have no idea. And that's what makes great writing great writing. So go to your local comic book shop today. Uh, tell them you want The Forgotten Queen uh, by, by Valiant. Uh, if you can't get to a local comic shop, uh, get on Comixology uh, and, 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 and get it there digitally, uh, and you can read it on your tablet. But again, again, I'm telling you right now, go to your local comic book shop. Uh, support your local comic book shop. Shop, get your physical copy. Um, go from there. And uh, if, you, if you need links to uh, local comic book shops, uh, you can uh, visit our Facebook page uh, out of the short box, and I'll put some links up there uh, for local comic book shops in the northern Kentucky and greater Cincinnati area. Uh, feel free to contact me. Go to out of the short box at gmail.com, and I'll be more than happy uh, to put you in contact with a local comic retailer who can get this book into your hands uh, because it's great. Uh, bravo again, Valiant. Great job. Love to see new characters. Love to see new characters coming to the comic uh, book stream. So go pick up your copy today of The Forgotten Queen number one. Until then, my name is Josiah McComas with Out of the Short Box, and I'll catch you in the next podcast.